last video we talked about quantum numbers and realized that the quantum numbers describe the location of electrons. What we have here is an orbital diagram. This is just kind of a shorthand way of, of putting down the location of those electrons um, based on, you know, drawing a circle to represent an orbit. And so what happens is we need to figure out what atoms we're talking about first of all. And so if we start out with hydrogen, hydrogen has one electron, and so what we do is we come in here and put one electron in that orbit. Now, the upward arrow represents that one electron, and we could say that that electron would have a one-half spin. So this relates back to the quantum numbers from the last video. When we look at helium, helium would have two electrons, and so we have one up, one down. You have to fill the energy level or fill up this... Uh, and energy level before you move on. So right now we have lithium or helium filled up. Now we're going to jump down to lithium. Lithium has three electrons. We've got two of them in the first energy level, so all we have to do is add one more, and now that's lithium. We move over to beryllium. We finish filling this orbital. And now we move over to boron. And one of the things uh, that's going to happen in boron is we start out with the one up, and then we move over to carbon. I'm going to put the second electron in the second orbital. Now, the reason that I do that is because of what's called Hund's rule. If we look back um, at the quantum numbers, that those two electrons, because these three orbitals have the same amount of energy, we have to half fill each one before we can come back and pair them. So if I put one more in there, there's nitrogen. Okay, so nitrogen has three single electrons. And then we come back and start to pair. That would give us oxygen. And so we start out and we just kind of build our way up. We you know, have two in the first S, two in the second S, two in the, or four in the 2P. And we finally fill this up. And you'll notice when we finally get to the end of this, we're talking about neon. And so... Pay attention to that, that that 2P is filled when we get to neon. Then we jump down to the third energy level, or, and we start out with sodium. Sodium's going to have one electron. Move over to magnesium. That's going to have two in that 3S. And as we move all the way across to argon, it should look a lot like neon um, in the sense that the 3 is... Whoop, I shouldn't put that one in yet. Got to move all the way across, then come back and pair them up. And when we get to argon, argon is going to be completely full. All right, so this is an orbital diagram just indicating where the electrons um, live. So uh, if we wanted to go back to quantum numbers, we could say that these two electrons would be 1, 0, 0, plus 1 half. That would be first energy level, 0 subshell, 0 orbital with a 1 half spin. The second electron would be zero, 1, 0, 0, minus 1 half. Okay? When we get over to the P's, it would be 2, 1. And remember that this is going to be the minus 1 orbital, a 0 or, or orbital, and a 1 orbital. So we could say minus 1, and this would be plus 1 half. And its partner, that arrow pointing down, would be 1, minus 1, minus 1 half. And then we could also indicate both of those, which would be 2, 1, 0, plus 1 half, 2, 1, 0, minus 1 half, and so on. This would be a long, tedious way to write out every electron in a particular atom. So the orbital diagram kind of gives us uh, indication, a visual indication of where electrons are. To make our lives a little easier, we're going to start looking at what's called an electron config configuration. So if we look at hydrogen again, remember that we had a 1s we had one circle and then one arrow. Well, an easier way to write that would be taking the 1s and then just telling how many electrons exist there. So we'd say 1s1. If we go to helium, so we're over here. I'm going to make this little chart for us. So this would be 1s, and it has two electrons. We drop to lithium. Lithium would be, we got to fill it up. So it's 1s2, and then it would be, 2s1 because you always have to start with the s's. We move over to beryllium. Beryllium would be 1s2, 2s2. Go to boron, 1s2, 2s2. 
Now we have four electrons total, but we need five. So it starts out with 2p and then 1. And notice there's some cool things. And you'll notice on this chart it says the s block. Well, that simply means that these two columns right here are always s's. And so if you have something like calcium, that's always going to be an S2 because you have S1 here, and then this is going to be S2. This is going to be S1, S2, but this is going to be 3 S1, 3 S2, 4 S1, 4 S2. Over here, you'll notice these are the P blocks. So there's, if we look at this, there are six, not including helium, there are six columns here. So this would be P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, and finally P6. The middle section down here is the D block. And if you remember, there were five orbitals, and each orbital can have two electrons, so there's actually ten things across this section. So when you're starting to look at all these electrons, all we have to do is look, just count our way across. So it's going to be one, two, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. That's kind of one of those magic numbers that's going to keep reappearing for us um, this year. But when we get down to this location down in the Ds, you'll notice there's a 10 stretch in the middle here. Well, this says 4. This would be 4s1, 4s2. But that guy right there actually is a 3D. Ds always trail the Ss by 1. So if I wanted to write out scandium, and we'll see if I can move my, um, well, we'll just, we'll just write scandium right here. So scandium would be um, SC. It would always start it with 1S, so 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3, or 3S2, 3P6, 4S2. So that means we're right, we're right there right now. But we need to jump into scandium, so actually that's going to be 3D1. So what happens is we go 4S because it takes less energy to fill that 4S than it does the 3D. And so we actually fill up the 4S, and then we fill the 3D. We move all the way over here, and right here we start out with gallium is going to be 4P1. So we fill up the 3D, and then we start 4Ps. So just something to... Keep in mind that the D's always trail by one. Now, when we start really considering atoms, um, let's take 1s1, uh, that's hydrogen, and let's do 1s2, 2s1, that'd be lithium, and then you do 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, if, if we look at those in the periodic table, all we're doing is we're writing hydrogens, lithium, sodiums, uh, electron configuration. So this would be sodium. Now, all of them have something in common. And the reason they're in that column in the periodic table is because they all have this thing in common, which is, is their um, what we call uh, the valence electrons. So what we do is we take the outermost energy level, in this particular case, the first energy level is the outermost energy level. How many electrons exist there? One. So there is one valence electron. Take the outermost energy level, two. There is one electron, so there is one valence electron. If we look at sodium, it's in the, the outermost energy level is three, and there is one valence electron. So as we start to play around uh, looking at different atoms, we want to look for those valence electrons, which are really important. So as we move, move on, the next thing we're going to do is start to really explore valence electrons because they lead us into bonding and some other things.